Live from Case at 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. We start with this San Antonio helping our neighbors out in El Paso. A local organization is helping a traumatized community after yet another shooting there reignited grief and also fear. And that shooting happening yesterday at a mall in El Paso. And the city has already dealt with the 2019 mass shooting at a Walmart that killed 23 people. And that group here in San Antonio has experienced dealing with the traumas that we've seen here in South Texas. Our Jonathan Cotto is going to explain how that group plans to help. Today, a team from the Ecumenical Center in San Antonio heading to the scene of the shooting that's left one person dead and three others wounded. So our first dispatch team is going to be a team of four, and they're very experienced. They will be providing immediate and ongoing trauma-informed mental health care. So providing counseling resources, crisis counseling, to those um, in various parts of the community, but particularly on site uh, where the shooting occurred last night. Wednesday's gunfire in El Paso, adding to the dozens of people already killed this year in mass shootings across the country. We previously had responded to El Paso back in 2019, just as the Ecumenical Center was summoned and, and went into service in Sutherland Springs in 2017, and then again most recently in Uvalde. Texas. She says meeting the needs of the El Paso community is important, but even more critical is assisting those directly affected. It's heartbreaking um, to hear that there's more families, that there's another community that's going to experience this injury, if you will, this victimization. Mental health counselors at the Ecumenical Center understand that recent events in El Paso may be triggering to many and remind our community that they are here to assist. For more information on their services, you can head on over to our website, KSET.com. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has now identified the man who was shot and killed overnight. That person is 29-year-old Refugio Alvarez. He died after someone shot him in the chest and hand at an apartment complex on Bandera. Now, Alvarez was taken to a nearby hospital for treatment but later died. His death has since been ruled a homicide, so now police are looking for his killer. A woman was shot multiple times this morning while walking her dog behind a hotel, and police say she knew the shooter. Officers were called around 1 o'clock this morning to the La Quinta Inn on West Military Drive near Highway 90. Police told us the woman was walking her dog when someone in a sports car pulled up next to her and started firing. Investigators say the woman knew her attackers. She even gave an address to SAPD. So far, no word on any arrests. Now, death and legal troubles, that's what happened to several drivers who were involved in a rollover crash on the city's northwest side. San Antonio police say that one man was killed in that crash overnight. It happened on the I-10 access road near Medical Drive, but as Katrina Weber tells us, two other drivers are facing charges in connection with what happened right after that. It's tough to find signs of what was a Cadillac CTS among all this twisted metal. The car was left in bad shape. Its driver, though, was killed. San Antonio police say the 20-year-old man lost control of it around 2.30 this morning while traveling west on the I-10 access road not far from Medical Drive. The car rolled over repeatedly, throwing him out onto the road. Here in the daylight, you can see exactly how that car went off course. This paint shows the route it took when it left the road and then slammed right into that brick wall. The Cadillac then bounced off and came to rest on the access road, but the trouble didn't end there. Officers at the scene told us there was a second and third crash. They say the red car hit the wreckage, then the silver car hit a tree. It appeared to be drunk. They could face charges related to driving while intoxicated. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. District 10 City Councilman Clayton Perry will not run for a fourth and final term in office. That announcement coming today, a day before the filing deadline for the May 6th election. A spokeswoman for his office sent a statement from the councilman saying that he will not run. Perry's future's plans have been a source of speculation since he returned from leave of absence on January 12th. He faces charges of a misdemeanor DWI and failure to stop and give information for an alleged hit and run back in November. A San Antonio man wrongfully convicted back in 1991 during the satanic panic hysteria finally got his name cleared. 
The state has exonerated Melvin Quinney for his co conviction of child indecency. Erica Hernandez sat down with Quinney and she explains how he got here and now he's now ready to move on. So, like the beginning of the end of a very long nightmare. <laughs> Melvin Queenie was all smiles. You know, uh, Yesterday, he and his family heard the news they've been waiting years to hear. Melvin's conviction was vacated. He was exonerated and would no longer have to register as a sex offender. It was a long time coming. Um, I was uh, not sure that I, I'd even get this far. In 1991, Melvin was convicted for indecency with a child after his son had accused him of being the leader of a satanic cult and had sexually abused him and his sister. Melvin was sentenced 20 years in prison but was released in 1999 and required to register as a sex offender for his entire life. Last summer, with the help of the Innocence Project of Texas, Melvin's son John, now an adult, was back in court but this time to testify that the entire ordeal was a lie. John, uh, he's been carrying a guilt trip, you know, ever since uh, back there in uh, 91, I guess. And so this is helping him a lot. You know, I worry more about those children than I do myself, you know. Uh, it's, it's affected every one of them to a certain degree. Melvin now hopes with the compensation owed to him by the state to move to Dallas to be closer to his kids and grandkids. We love each other, you know, and, and that's the main thing. We're back together. That's the main thing. Erica Hernandez, case at 12 News. <laughs> mm. The so-called San Antonio Justice Charter is now officially on the May 6th ballot after a council vote today. The new Proposition A includes a host of proposed charter changes on policing, including decriminalizing marijuana and abortion. The city attorney has said that most of the Prop A changes are unenforceable, but he also said the council has to put it on the ballot. The city council has no discretion. The enforceability of the petition does not relieve you of your legal obligation to put the petition on the ballot because the adequate number of signatures were achieved. Uh, that's why you're not going to hear deliberation on the merits from this council. Still, the three Northside councilmen all left council chambers rather than vote on it today. Manny Pelaez and Clayton Perry indicated it was because they believe the amendment violates state and federal law. John Courage said he didn't think the ballot language gave a comprehensive review of all the proposals and their implications. Now we're going to take a live look outside of something that we've been watching for the last hour. That's 281 at Bitters. And when we showed this to you at 5 o'clock, I mean, it was down to a crawl. Not so much the case anymore. Yeah, traffic is moving a little slowly there. That, those are the southbound lanes there. We know that one lane and the exit ramp are blocked right now, but at least traffic seems to be moving in the right direction right now, or at least at a better pace. Having lost his battle with cancer on Monday, a lot of people are mourning the loss of famed artist and muralist Jesse Trevino. Among them is Michael Roman, a former apprentice of Trevino's, who went on to become a muralist himself. Jesse de Goyado says that Roman didn't realize it early on that he was working with the man who would be his inspiration. The spirit of healing gracing the front of the Children's Hospital of San Antonio is one of the late Jesse Trevino's most iconic murals. Made of thousands of tiles, each was carefully cemented in place, followed by a team of apprentices. Clean it real nice and then, you know, grout everything and make sure everything was, was set really well. But it wasn't until he got the job did Michael Roman know who Jesse Trevino was. Oh, so that's who Jesse is. I had no idea. The same Michael Roman who years later created a West Side landmark. The famous Vietnam mural is a tribute to combat veterans like Trevino and Roman's father, Tony. That's his dad reading a letter from his then sweetheart and future wife. A mural by his former apprentice, which Trevino got to see. You could see it. He was he was overjoyed. He was really happy. Proud of you. Very proud, yes, absolutely. Roman says that was the last time he saw his mentor and inspiration. Not letting anything stop me. You know, nothing stopped him. Given Jesse Trevino's service and sacrifice, I'm told he'll always have a very special place in the hearts of veterans like himself. Especially as a Purple Heart recipient, it said Trevino became an example for others. If we can continue on with our lives and, and do something productive, nothing is impossible. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News.
Let's take a look outside with live cam. Temperatures have made that big drop, big change from yesterday to today. Almost perfect that Adam Kasky is out at the rodeo you because know? it is rodeo weather when things turn a little crisper. This is what he always talks about. I mean, it's just a lot cooler now than it was yesterday and tomorrow it's going to be even more so. It, it is and tomorrow you're really going to feel the chill if you're coming out to the rodeo Friday, even Saturday jacket, sweater weather, right? Take your pick, you'll want the long sleeves. And you know, I brought one of my thermometers out here. It's 54 degrees on my thermometer ornament here outside on the rodeo grounds. As that sun's setting, it's gonna cool off mighty quickly. That's for sure. We're gonna get to the forecast in just a bit. And by the way, coming up next half hour, I'm just gonna tease ahead of this right now because Myra, Steph and Mia, you're all in the studio. I'm gonna need your help. Okay, I'll tell you why in just a bit. We'll get to how cold it's going to be the next few nights coming right up. Just right. like Adam, keeping us on our toes. <laughs> All right. Well, last year, the woman who you just saw, she faced serious health challenges and she needed triple bypass surgery. You're thinking that you're okay and you're invincible, but we're not promised tomorrow. No, we're not. Coming up, the specialized surgery that allowed doctors to keep her heart beating during the procedure. Starting at 7 o'clock, right after this newscast, Governor Greg Abbott will deliver his State of the State address. Abbott's office said that he will provide an update on his priorities for the 88th legislative session underway right now and honor exceptional Texans from across the state. He will be speaking in front of a very small group at the Novion Magnetics Corporation, a company in San Marcos. Away from any journalists, though. You can watch the live stream for yourself. It'll be on our website, ksat.com, starting at 7. Welcome back. A nonprofit dedicated to the community, desperate for help one year after a devastating fire. Tonight on the Night Beat, the effort to move into a new space and also how you can help with that. Did you guys fix the, uh, the issue with the roaches? Mm -hmm. A Southside bakery with bugs crawling on the baked goods. Yeah. Tim Gerber stops by the business to see what they're doing to correct the problem and reveals the other violations that were found behind the kitchen door. That's tonight on the Night Beat. Imagine having heart surgery or even performing it while the heart is still beating. Coronary bypass surgery is the most common heart surgery in the U.S. and improves blood flow to the heart by bypassing arteries that are clogged with plaque. Ursula Perry shows us a new specialized way that this surgery is being done, which keeps the heart beating during the entire procedure. For New York artist Yvelish Boucher, putting brush to paper last year was cathartic and very personal. Boucher began painting safari-themed pictures after hearing the wonderful news from her son and his fiancée. They were expecting a baby. It also compelled the 61-year-old to make a life-altering decision. I got to be able to run around and chase this little guy. Boucher was facing some serious health issues. She had type 2 diabetes, a previously undetected stroke, left her weak on one side. She had heart disease and learned she needed a triple bypass. Cardiac expert Dr. John Puskas recommended a highly specialized surgery using arteries instead of veins. And unlike other bypass procedures, surgeons did not stop the heart. Instead of attaching arteries or veins to the aorta, we actually leave them with their own normal inflow. Dr. Puskas removed an artery from Boucher's wrist and performed the bypass. Surgeons also surgically repositioned two internal arteries to improve blood flow. Dr. Puskas says arterial graft and off-pump surgery leads to a shorter recovery and better outcomes. Finally, the moment Boucher had been waiting for. I did a little peekaboo thing with him, and he gave me my first smile. Boucher is recovering and spending time with little Esra and feeling better than ever. During traditional coronal bypass surgery, there is a 2% risk you'll have a stroke during the procedure. But with this arterial graft, no touch technique, that risk factor goes down to one quarter of 1%. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News.
Now we're going to go outside to something pretty neat. We've shown you this before. It's the Lady of Guadalupe mosaic that it was done by the artist Jesse Trevino, which Jesse de Goyado did a story on just a few moments ago. Uh, he obviously is loved by people here in San Antonio. Uh, we're hoping that he, you know, rests in peace. But yeah, a lot of people mourning his death right now. But his work, you can see it all over San Antonio. Such cool stuff. And there's so much going on in San Antonio. Yes, there is a lot for him to be remembered for. Yeah. And we have uh, Adam Kasky actually out and about as well this evening, not just Sky 12. He is at the rodeo and it sounded like you were going to need some studio participation uh, earlier. Yes. So we're on standby. <laughs> Yes, you'll be on standby for the next half hour, okay? We're gonna be heading inside and we're gonna go run into my old pal, Sugar, who is a hat fitting extraordinaire. She's famous. I need an opinion from y'all and I always ask ladies for their opinion. I don't care what the guys think about it all. Anyway, we're outside and we're feeling the chill, especially when that uh, when that breeze blows. By the way, you know, you, you never know what you're gonna run into at the rodeo. You just come across these random things and a lot of people have come get their pictures taken. I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, you know what? This is probably what it's like to be a toddler in the sense that every chair is so big, your feet are always dangling. Makes sense, kind of puts you in their mindset for a minute. Or for me, more than a minute. <laughs> okay, let's talk temperatures really quickly and get to the forecast because it's chilly, especially when that breeze blows down here. You have the Ferris wheel off in the background. The lights are on outside. That's why I wanted to come outside. I love it when the lights are on, everything's lit up. Anyway, 48 degrees right now in Fredericksburg. We're 50 in Kerrville, 53 in San Antonio. And you go off to the west, still 57 in Uvalde. We're all feeling the chill. What compounded it today were the winds, not just here, but all across Texas, we're feeling the wind and it just picked up at this moment. I'm feeling it right now. And maximum gusts were around 30 to 40 miles per hour, 40 mile per hour gust measured here in San Antonio, officially at the airport. And you look locally at the most recent wind gusts, anywhere from 10 to 29 miles per hour. It's quite a range out there, but clearly we're still having some of those gusts and it's not gonna get completely calm overnight. Notice that sustained wind forecast, it's a steady wind still at 10 to 15 miles per hour, and that would imply wind gusts from 20 to 25. So not as windy tonight, but you'll still notice a bit of a breeze from time to time. Look at our morning low temperature trend. Here we go. It's rodeo season right down near freezing tomorrow morning. Same story on Saturday, right around 32 degrees, brief light freeze in some of our areas, especially off to the north and even west. Hondo, for example, 31, uh, 30, 31 in Canyon Lake, 29 Bulverde, Timberwood Park, and Bernie. You're looking ahead to our forecast, and by the noon hour, we will make it to around 50 degrees tomorrow, but the high temperature, only 56. That's it, that's the best we can do, 56 degrees, and that's with some sunshine. And most of us will be stuck right there in the mid 50s, 55 New Braunfels, Divine, Poteet, at about 57 for the high temperature. So jacket weather, that's for sure. Saturday, not much warmer, so if you're coming out to the rodeo, you have outdoor plans Friday and Saturday, just be ready for the chill, especially in the morning. Now, next week, it's a different story. By Monday, we're back to 80 degrees, and we're in the low 80s next week, so typical rodeo weather, up, down, all around. Unfortunately, not much for precipitation. Here's the big picture. The cold front that moved through here to cool us off, that's far off to the east now and that's moving to the southeast U.S. causing some severe weather. For us, the next system to watch is that upper level low in the Pacific. So that's just west of California, but it's drifting. It's got a mind of its own right now. It's cut off from the main push, the main wind flow. So it's just drifting, just meandering, kind of taking its time. And you look at the forecast here, it's gonna be out there for several days and then finally get picked up by what we call a kicker trough. That's gonna come in and move it toward us and throw some energy our way by next Tuesday night. But unfortunately, most of the energy is going to be back to the north of us. So I don't think we'll see much in terms of rain. Looking ahead, a lot of sunshine tomorrow through the weekend, mixture of sun and clouds, and then Tuesday night into Wednesday, a 20% chance of a few showers. That's about it. All right, I need a new straw hat, ladies. I'm gonna, ha I need your help to decide for me which one, because there are a few options and I can't do it myself. Seriously, I can never pick myself. So we'll be back next hour, half hour. We will be ready with opinions, don't you worry. <laughs> Thanks, yes. Adam. Although I like the one he's wearing now. Yeah, All right, Adam, thank you.
All right, so you have the Spurs uh -huh. who haven't been doing so well, no. but then you have Malachi Brenham. Yeah, and he is 19 years old, mm -hmm. and for this month, he's just about averaging his age in points per game. Young man is certainly taking off in the month of February. Definitely a bright spot for the Spurs. And Jordan Farr says, SAFC, your reigning USL champions, are as hungry as ever. Coming up. Rookie guard Malachi Branham continues to be a bright spot for the Spurs, especially during their 14 game losing streak. Last night in Charlotte, he led the Spurs with 23 points, his fourth 20 point output this month. For the season, he's averaging nine points per game, but this month, he's averaging a career best 18.1 points per contest. His offense is really coming along, but if he really wants to make Pop happy, then he needs to play better defense. Last night, Pop called the timeout 16 seconds into the third quarter after Dennis Smith Jr. raced back for a slam dunk. Branham was asked what did Pop say during that timeout. He just asked us if he wanted to play. Um, you know, they got that dunk and a lot of people didn't come back. Um, so, you know, just transition defense. Um, that's a struggle of ours. So, you know, that's that's all he asked. Like, I can't tell y'all to play. Y'all going gonna to have to go out there and do it. So we kind of turned around and, you know, got some stops and, you know, came close. The Spurs hit the All-Star break in a manner they probably never imagined, riding a franchise record 14-game losing streak. Now they'll have plenty of time to self-reflect. And they want to enjoy themselves on the break, be with their loved ones and that sort of thing. But I want to take a little time, and I want it to hurt a little bit as far as uh, feel a little sorry for themselves because they're losing games. You don't want to lose, start playing some defense. That's the deal. Pop wants to see his guys play better D when they resume play on Thursday the 23rd at the new look Dallas Mavericks. Kyrie Luca and the Mavs are seventh in the West and they hit the break on a three game slide. Based on goalkeeping alone, San Antonio FC has a great chance to repeat and win the USL Championship trophy again. Jordan Farr is the last line of defense, and he's the reigning USL Championship goalkeeper of the year. He enjoyed a fantastic 2022 season, posting 17 shutouts in 33 matches last season to lead the league. 15 of those were in the regular season. And in the postseason, he recorded back-to-back -back clean sheets to help them win the title. And the guys, well, they're ready to do it again. It's really unique. I mean, this is the first championship I won professionally, and so being in a position where we're now in the next season to see guys come in as hungry as they, as they are, it's it's surpri a really warm, <laughs> happy surprise to come to where it's like, okay, everyone's on the same page. Like, no one's just happy with how last year went. We want to continue for more. SFC kicks off the USL Championship title defense on March 11th at home against Oakland Roots SC. That is fireworks night. Just see guys out there throwing and be around. It, it's a lot of fun talking baseball and uh, with, you know, getting to know the guys in the clubhouse, even staff more, and minor league staff. So uh, it's a really good day for me. After three years away from the game, Bruce Bochy is back in baseball as manager of the Texas Rangers. Pitchers and catchers reported to spring training in Surprise, Arizona yesterday, and they started their workouts as well. And I heard they had to move them up because they were expecting bad weather out there, so they had to start a day earlier. Ooh, okay. Be ready. Yep. Thank you. Our KSAT Q&A is coming up next. Welcome back. At some point, you've heard that heart disease is the leading cause of death in the United States. But do you know what it actually is? It's something that we're going to focus on because February is National Heart Month. Yeah, it's a time to make sure you're paying attention to your own heart health and perhaps some signs that it's time to get things checked out. To talk about that, we have Dr. Don Huey, cardiac surgeon at UT Health San Antonio, joining us for today's KSAT Q&A. Dr. Huey, thank you for being here this evening. And let's start with that very question, heart disease. When we say that, what exactly are we talking about? Well, thank you for having me. Um, it's a really important question. As you mentioned, heart disease is the number one cause of death, and that's true for both men and women in the United States and many other countries. When we say heart disease, we're actually referring to a group of conditions that affect the structure or the function of the heart. Uh, the most common type of heart disease is coronary artery disease, and that is what causes heart attacks. That's the buildup of plaque or cholesterol inside the arteries so that the heart muscle does not get enough blood flow. Um, some other forms of heart disease include problems with heart rhythm, uh, problems with the internal structure of the heart, especially the heart valves, 
And when the muscle gets weak, it can't pump as well. And that leads to something called heart failure. Can we talk about how heart disease feels? Because we can describe uh, the different warning signs, but for the people who are watching this, maybe to explain it to them in a different way, how should it feel? Is it being short of breath often? Yes, that's a common one. So we can think of the warning signs of a heart attack, which most people are familiar with, you know, a crushing chest pain, especially on the left side. Uh, some more subtle signs of a heart attack are uh, pain in different areas, such as the upper back, the abdomen, the neck or the jaw. Um, but there can also be signs of uh, shortness of breath, as you stated, feeling more tired than usual, nausea, lightheadedness or heartburn that just doesn't go away are also signs of a heart attack. But with more chronic heart conditions that are not a heart attack, symptoms include feeling short of breath or fatigue when you're doing your usual or light activity, um, gaining water weight, or having swelling in the ankles or legs. Now, with the first set of symptoms that you just mentioned, it's hard to differentiate what's the difference between that and other things. Like you just mentioned a uh, jaw pain or maybe uh, upper back pain. I mean, how can people say, okay, this is different, I need to go to the doctor? Well, sometimes it's really you know difficult to to ascertain. I would say if it comes on when you're doing something or you're in a stressful situation, that may be more likely to be you know a heart attack. If you haven't had any trauma or you know you know caused a crick in your neck, then that may be more likely to be a, a heart attack. Um, and again, heartburn that doesn't go away with heartburn medication. I really do see that quite commonly uh, here. And people think it's heartburn and, and they sort of ignore it. And it turns out to be a heart attack. You know, when people think heart issues, they may think of just that, a heart attack, something that comes on very suddenly. But some of these symptoms, could they last a while? Could they be prolonged and not just instantaneous? Yes, what we often see, especially with um, a condition called the condition called heart failure that I had mentioned, is that the symptoms are, are, are gradual and they sort of slowly develop over time so that people don't notice it or they think that, oh, well, I'm just getting old. I'm just out of shape. Um, you know, I'm just I'm just very stressed out about life. And that that's what can make it challenging to 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 recognize. And so I think if you're having those symptoms and they're they're not really kind of getting better with time, then it would be helpful to talk to your doctor or seek, um, you know, the, a cardiologist to talk about these things and find out if you have heart disease because much of it can be reversible or, or well-treated with modern medications and lifestyle changes. Now, how far along uh, with these symptoms do you have to be in order to, for your doctor to run a test and in order for the doctor to detect that something is happening with your heart? Well, you don't even have to be very far along with the symptoms. Um, we know, as I mentioned, it's, it's very common in men and women. One in three men and one in four women will develop cardiovascular disease in their lifetime. So catching it early before you develop symptoms is actually very important because you can prevent permanent damage or long-term damage to your heart if you catch these things earlier. Um, people who are particularly at risk are people who have diabetes, uh, people who have a strong family history of heart disease, especially family members that have had it at a young age, um, tobacco use. And then the really important risk factors are those that we can change. So a heart a heart healthy diet is one that is low in, in fats and um, sugary foods. And then a sedentary lifestyle, you know, especially with COVID, everybody got very sedentary. And we're starting to see younger and younger people develop heart disease because younger people are not getting out and exercising as much. They do more activities such as you know, video games or social media. What about men versus women? I've often heard that a lot of times women are guilty of ignoring signs of an issue and saying, ah, it's nothing. I have other things to worry about. And that leading to you know, more significant heart impacts down the road. Is there a real difference in what you see men versus women? Yes, we do see a difference. Um, historically, women have presented later in life, and we believe that's because there is a protective effect of estrogen. So after menopause, then the disease starts to kick in. Um, the symptoms in women are also uh, more subtle, and that may lead to the underdiagnosis and underrecognition. Women are more prone to have pain in a different area than the chest. They would have it in the back or the upper abdomen, as I had mentioned. Um, they're more prone to have shortness of breath and fatigue rather than you know, the, the strong chest pain. We are seeing it in younger and younger women because of those factors that I had mentioned, the lifestyle factors. Now, before we go, do you have a message or uh, can you share a message with the people of San Antonio who are watching this as far as what you've seen? Sure, I think the most important message is that um, 
even though it's a serious thing, it's not something to be afraid of. You know, we have great medical care here in, in San Antonio. And, um, you know, being afraid and leading to delays in care sometimes is, is much more harmful than, you know, seeking care early, recognizing the signs and, you know, just getting checked out with your primary care doctor and um, with modern medic med medicines, as I mentioned, and, and lifestyle changes, people can really kind of reverse disease if it's already set in. It's better to know than to not know. Dr. Don Huey with UT Health San Antonio. Thanks for being here this evening. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. We'll be right back.